Okay, so last in my series of three decks is the Reasonescence Lab Invicta. Yep, that's the one whose name sounds a bit like a lawnmower and with a front panel that looks like a CB radio. Now, again, I'm going to be starting from the back, especially because some of the features will make a lot more sense if you can see their connections on the back first. Okay, first the usual balanced outputs and uh, single-ended outputs with very lovely uh, gold-plated CMC jacks. Uh, unlike the other two, an AES EBU balanced input, digital input, that's like a balanced version of the uh, SPDIF. And it has two, actually these two, ports are the uh, SPDIF inputs which use uh, uh, BNC sockets which is the proper socket to use rather than RCA but less common so I, uh, you could use adapters to use an RCA cable but I'd recommend using a, a good BNC cable for that since you're buying if you're buying one you're buying a good DAC uh, such a high quality unit sort of you know try you know using anything that will uh, degrade the quality of the inputs is uh, not a good idea, though on this kind of grade of unit generally doesn't make a lot of difference, if any. An optical input is also included and a uh, high res uh, USB input which also now with the latest version 5 firmware accepts DSD. There's also a TOSLink output which can be which can take the digital data from the USB input and send it on to something else as well. Now, not an input but an output, HDMI. That can be plugged into a TV and on the TV you can view the contents of the last input which is not on the back but which is on the front. The SD card input. Now if you have an SD card, uh, the usual types including ones that, uh, the high capacity ones that do video. Um, I don't know the largest capacity Presumably you can go quite large, I think maybe up to 32 gigabytes at least. Uh, put on some lossless files of the usual file types, I think most of the common ones are accepted, and or DSD files, and using either the uh, using the controls here or they come the new ones come with an Apple remote like this one, you can view, select and play back the uh, the files or plug it into a TV and you get the album art as well. So that's a very handy feature if you'd like to uh, uh, play back off an SD card. Uh, supposedly using the SD card is the best option and uh, I haven't tried to do a detailed comparison of each as such um, but probably the SD card at least technically is going to be best over any other input followed probably by the USB or if you maybe have a very very good transport the SPDIF but it'll be a close call. I mean, in this kind of unit, it shouldn't make any difference. Um, but you never know. It might make a tiny, tiny bit of difference. If you have a bazillion dollar system, you might notice something. Now, anyway, onto the front. We have two headphone outputs, which can be switched on with the buttons here. And your rotary volume control. And uh, this is the old version, so it only has six lights to indicate the, uh, the, the kind, uh, the, um, playback frequency but uh, for the other features I shall once again plug in some power and we can have a look at the, uh, the many 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 other features available now when you start it up you get the red standby light and a press of the button will give you power on and a blue light now uh, I've started to set this up to output minus 40 dB and if you're not used to uh, these kinds of volume controls the highest volume is zero and it goes backwards from there uh, down to minus 127.5 now most down to about minus 52 I think it was around 50 is actually it um, it's a 32 bit volume control so even with 24 bit audio you don't, you're actually losing anything really until you hit down to about minus 50 or so dB and then it starts cutting into the actual uh, digital data 
So you actually, for most of the range, I mean my usable range, I go from about, from using my Adam, Art, Adam Artist active speakers, I go from about minus 40, well actually with headphones from about minus 40 up to about, oh, I can get quite loud, depending on the music. I listen to a lot of music which has a very, very big dynamic range. So it was very quietly recorded, there's no compression. So I can get quite loud. Um, now, some of the other things you can do are, you know, you plug in some headphones. Where is my single-ended one again? Switch them on or off as required. Now each, then this controls the headphone volume as well, but if you have a headphone output that's on and I hold the button, you might just be able to see it. I can change the, the offset of the headphone. So, for example, if you're using it just as a DAC, where you set the DAC to zero, you might want the headphone offset at minus 30 dB and it can be set individually for each one so you can have two different headphones with two different sensitivities and you can actually volume match them uh, as necessary. I'm doing the opposite, I'm actually using active speakers so I tend to have the headphones Oops. Well, let me do it, I switched it off that's why I set the headphones at, uh, at zero offset instead so that's a great bit of flexibility, and if you think that's all, you haven't, we haven't even started into the menus. Uh, pressing the relevant menu button will get us the uh, input selection, and then down into the main options, which I can access there. Uh, if you know about uh, digital phase, you can invert the phase, not just of the whole deck, but of individual channels. And if you don't understand about phase, some digital recordings were recorded out of phase, digitally, so you can fix that. Uh, it's not something you generally encounter much, not that I've encountered, especially with recent recordings. Uh, startup source, of course, you can select which default input it starts up with. Uh, the XLR startup level, of course, I set it to minus 40 dB to start up with. Uh, the max volume level, of course, I set it to zero, minus zero. Ah, now here's a handy thing. If you're like me, your room's full of blue glowing lights, like off your computer gear or all your audio gear. Um, you probably get quite sick of it, as I do, and I wish people would select other than blue for their LEDs. But anyway, you can turn the screen brightness down between up there, 15 levels, uh, 10 is kind of moderate. And this camera is probably showing them lighter, much brighter than they actually are. Um, and the, thank God, the LED brightness you can turn down. Again, if you like listening in a dark room or whatever, the hour in the evening, it's certainly, certainly a, a bonus. And even the standby LED brightness. So of course this is, as I said, up to version five of the firmware, and they basically you can they can put in add features as necessary, so you can program the whole thing as required. It's very clever. Uh, the USB speed, if you need backwards compatibility with USB one, you can select that. Uh, it does for Windows require a driver to get high res playback required. One of those things that we can blame Microsoft for. On a Mac, you don't need that. It will just work at any including DSD with something like Audivana, it'll work fine. Uh, the filter type, um, if you don't know about digital filters, don't stress over it. Um, of course, say for CD audio, there, or for any kind of audio, there is a limit to how high a frequency can be played back. So for CD audio, it's half the sample rate of 44.1, which is 22.05 kilohertz, pretty much at the limit or above general, most of our hearing level. Um, and to cut off any anything above that, they have to you have a, you have to have a filter which originally was analog and is now digital on most decks, or all decks I would probably say. Uh, and if you do a straight cut off, it causes issues with aliasing and, and distortion, which some people believe to be the cause of people not liking digital equipment over analog equipment. So they have, as well as the default uh, uh, ES nine hundred one eight filters, they have designed their own filters for, for best results. And you can just leave the default, which is the appetizing filter. And maybe it'll make a difference for you, maybe it won't, about half and half. Some people think it feel it does, some people feel it doesn't. Uh, and only on some kinds of music, and you read reviews where they say, oh, this kind of music, I prefer this filter, and that kind of music, I prefer that one. Whatever. Um, HDMI output on or off. You can mute the XLR output, which is kind of handy. You can turn the Toslink output on. Uh, you can, uh, the re there's settings for the um, SD card input, how you view the files. Uh, you can also set the default headphone output offset 
for each one, whether they're switched on or not, but power up. And the last and interesting feature is called the differential head P, headphone output. Turning this on, uh, you'll see, if I just turn it off and on again, you'll see both lights come on now. This changes, instead of there being one and two headphones, it becomes left headphone and right headphone, and turns these into uh, uh, individual channel outputs, rather like on the back of Pro Audio Gear. And for that, you can uh, basically turn into a balanced headphone amp. And I did. Now, I thought I'd be clever because I had already had a, a dual 3-pin XLR headphone adapter for my headphones. I thought I'd be clever and, you know, put on a, an adapter. Two adapters, in fact. And then I found out, no, you can't do that. They're too, that's going to make, they're too closely spaced for those to both go in. So actually, as I'm on a, wind, on, a, on a good day with the wind blowing in the right direction, I'm handy with a soldering iron. So I made this little adapter and with two TRS standard headphone sockets, plugs, not sockets, and that's that, uh, to plug in my LCD3s with. And if you're wondering what, what this is, I terminate my headphones nowadays with, with a uh, mini four pin XLR because I have to plug my headphones into so many different things. And, you know, it could be a mini, a normal, balanced, three pin balanced, you know, all that kind of thing. So I just do, I just make adapters for everything. And that saves me having to carry around a whole lot of cables because I only have to carry around a whole lot of adapters instead, like that. And this is a diversion. That's another one I did for the mini jack. But I have that, I can use these with my other headphones as well. It's really handy. And anyway, I did plug the LCD3s in, and the sound was very good. It was very clear. It was quite, uh, uh, being this is, the output kind of was a little bit kind of brighter sounding, a bit clearer and sharper sounding, which worked really well with the LCD3s. That compared to my normal headphones, headphone amps. And uh, so I was really happy with that. Um, it's not, again, going to replace a full-sized high-end headphone amp, but all the same. Uh, with something like IEMs, this headphone, you know, this headphone amp is really good. So if I turn off differential output, and uh, you know, you plug in an adapter and plug your IEMs in, the result was really, really good. And especially with you know fairly sensitive headphones, it was excellent. Now, that's the overview of the Resonescence Invicta or Resonescence Lawnmower if you like. But sound-wise, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, and again, it probably depends on what you compare it to. You know, it's it's kind of nothing but the facts, ma'am, kind of flat. It, it's neutral. I plugged all three DACs into, you know, a, a power strip, and this one was, along with my, my Master 7, which has got an overkill power supply, was least affected by not having a power conditioner there. Um, or least affected by having the power conditioner there, in a sense. It was really kind of you know, dark background, but absolutely kind of you know, flat, neutral, and clear sound. And you know, in comparison, my, my Master 7 is a bit more kind of you know, romantic or organic sounding. There we go, cheesy, cheesy uh, description, but uh, that's how it was. The uh, interest, really dramatic comparison, was with an Eximus DP1, which was a bit less resolving, but much more kind of musical, if you kind of more, more like a what, something you want, felt like listening to, where it made the, uh, re the Invicta sound a bit kind of cold and clinical and analytical. But you know, some people like that sound, and by itself, without comparison, uh, people might, a lot of people will find it just fine. Um, now, but the DSD is where it became more uh, of a surprise. I could only get a couple of native DSD files, but I converted some music. Uh, the Amber Rubarth album to DSD to have a listen. And the sound, I don't know if it's only a little bit less resolving, but it is kind of a bit more uh, relaxing and uh, uh, smooth or, yeah, a little more natural sounding, uh, a little more vinyl sounding, I suppose, than the uh, than normal PCM files. So that was an interesting, uh, interesting difference about that one. So if you're big on DSD or, you know, you're a big kind of a SACD ripping person, then this deck might be uh, definitely in, in worth uh, taking a look at too. So anyway, Reason Essence in the Victor, out of which I shall 
jump out of the options and get back to my settings. And last but not least will be the final conclusion of what I think of all of them.